The coast of Maine is edged with a thick border of seaweed. This is rockweed. Growing in dense beds, rockweed provides important habitat for the animals of the intertidal. Humans have been harvesting rockweed for time immemorial, but recently demand has grown for seaweeds that can be processed into fertilizers and supplements. As a result, rockweed harvest has increased fast. And that increase in harvest has brought this unassuming seaweed into a tangled debate about who gets to own ocean resources. I'm Eliza Oldock, and I study marine resources and policy. I wanted to learn more about this case, so I headed to Maine to talk to some of the people that are involved. And can you just tell the story of the of the ruling, the court case? So the court case was, so oh, this, we're going to have to back up a little bit. Make that back up a lot. This story traces all the way back to the 1700s. In Maine, colonial law stated that the ocean belongs to everyone. It's public. But the inner tidal, the space between high tide and low tide, belongs to the upland landowner. It's private. But there's one important condition on this. People may privately own the inner tidal, but they have to allow public access for three purposes. Fishing, fouling, and navigation. Fast forward to 2015. Private landowners see rockweed harvesters coming onto their land, their inner tidal. The rockweed harvesters say, this is a public resource. The private landowners say, that's not public, you're stealing my rockweed. And thus, the court case. The way I used to think of it as a shorthand is, is, is rockweed more like a tree or more like a clam? If it's like a tree, then that owner has ownership and you can't come on and like harvest that tree. Or is it more like a clam that clamors can come onto your property and do it? And they decided it was more like a tree. The case hinged on this distinction. Attorneys worked hard to convince the judges that rockweed can't fall under the category fishing. They argued that it's really no different from a terrestrial plant. Hannah Weber is a rockweed expert, and for her, that definition just doesn't make sense. If you go back and read the court documents, people talk about it being a plant and talk about it being like a tomato, and it's, it's not. We are closer phylogenetically to mushrooms than brown algae are to plants. It's that different. It's grating to hear it compared to a tomato plant. It's, it's not. But it's more than grating. It also prompts real questions about the role of public or private ownership in marine resource management. Some say that privatizing is the only way to save the rockweed from overharvest. Others say that privatizing does the exact opposite and destroys any incentive to conserve this resource. Given this uncertainty, it's crucial that Hannah and Chris continue their research. Turns out, the ruling impacts that too. The court ruling significantly changed how we were conducting our research. We needed to now go back to the landowners and say, can we please do research harvests in your rockweed? And, and some of them, of course, said no. And some of them said, yes, no problem. You know, we've had a mixed bag of responses, but luckily enough, people said, Yes, this is important research for us to, to move forward. It is important research because only that and time will tell the real impacts of the decision to privatize the rockweed of me.